we are looking at the knowledge area chemical change. The topic is stoichiometry. I normally pronounce it stoichiometry, right? Uh, we find that this uh, word has its origin. Stoichio comes uh, has a Greek origin, and metri means measure, measurement. <coughs> so, stoichiometry is actually the relationship among quantities of reactants and products. Okay, is the relationship of quantities of reactants and products involved in a chemical reaction. And it applies to the laws of definite proportion and conservation of mass and energy for equations. And when we're dealing with chemical equations, we must ensure that we always balance chemical equations. They must be balanced, right? That means um, uh, the number of atoms of a particular type on one side uh, of the equation must equal to the uh, same type, to the same uh, type having the same number of atoms as the reactant side. And the number in front of the substance is known as a stoichiometric coefficient. Right, and the stoichiometric coefficient tells us the relative numbers of moles of reactants and products taking part in a reaction. And then the law of conservation of mass applies uh, to a chemical uh, equations. Right? So, a balanced chemical equation symbolizes uh, both the qualitative and quantitative changes that occur in a chemical reaction. Right, now, if we look at the theoretical yield, right? The theoretical yield here So in terms of the balanced equation, it is a theoretical mass of the products uh, uh, using a given mass of the reactants, right? And it is a maximum mass of the product that can be obtained from a given mass of the reactant. Now, normally, the actual mass of the product obtained from experiment is always less than the theoretical amount. And we can then determine the percentage yield. So in that case, the percent yield would be the actual yield which we get from experiment over the theoretical yield times 100% which gives us an indication of the percent yield. Okay, now let's look at, let's balance some chemical equations. Okay, here we have uh, <coughs> first one, boron, boron, chlor uh, trichloride plus water, gives us boron, hydroxide, and hydrochloric uh, acid. As you can see, the phases are indicated. Boron trichloride is a gas, H2O liquid. Boron hydroxide is in aqueous solution, and HCl is in aqueous solution as well. So if we look at this, right, uh, we need to know how to interpret uh, a chemical equation. So what is this equation telling us? It is saying that uh, we spoke about coefficients. 
and firstly let's see if this equation is balanced and if you look at it the equation doesn't seem to be balanced okay which means uh, we have uh, three four hydrogens on the right and we've only got two hydrogens on the left and uh, we've got three chlorines on the left and we have only one chlorine on the right so in order to balance out our chlorine we can put a three here where, which means we balanced our chlorines are now balanced on both sides of the equation but if we look at our hydrogens now we've got three six hydrogens on the right and only two on the left so we put a three in front and we then look at that and when we look at that uh, so we our hydrogens are balanced our borons are balanced our oxygens are balanced as well we got three oxygens on the left and three oxygens on the right okay and there your equation is balanced so any calculations related to uh, chemical equations the equation has to be balanced let's look at the next one here you got sodium nitrate which then reacts to give us sodium nitrite plus oxygen gas and in this case we need to balance it this is a fairly easy one so we can see we need to put a 2 there right that gives us 2Na and there 2Na so we got 6 oxygens on the left and we've only got uh, uh, 6 I mean we've got 6 oxygen on, on the left and we've got 6 oxygens on the right so there that particular equation is balanced if we now look at the next one this one uh, is a bit more difficult, uh, you know, but we need to be able to balance it by inspection. So if we look at calcium phosphate, which is a solid, it reacts with silicon dioxide. And in our previous videos, you know that silicon dioxide is a molecular solid, and that reacts with carbon and carbon was also a molecular solid I'm just uh, uh, referring to that though so that you know what type of solid we dealing with uh, and then here it gives us calcium silicate plus carbon dioxide plus phosphorus right phosphorus is normally found uh, as a P4 molecule now if we have to balance this and then we see to balance that we'll have to put a 2 in front here okay and a 6 in front there and plus a 5 carbon right which then gives us 6 calcium silicates right plus carbon dioxide so it gives us 5 uh, CO2 plus uh, P4 right if we look at this here now and we say okay if I look at calcium on the left I've got 6 right and and I've got calcium on the right also 6 right if I look at phosphorus on the left I got four and on the right I also have four atoms of phosphorus if I look at silicon I've got six silicons right and I also have on the right uh, as I, I have six of that and if I look at carbon on the left I got five and on the right I also have carbon five right and if I look at oxygen on the left I have uh, if I look at it that gives me 
uh, uh, there is two times four is eight uh, times two is gives me sixteen oxygens there plus in uh, year it gives me twelve oxygens so in total I have twenty eight oxygens on the left if I look at the right I have here 18 oxygens, right? And here I have 10 oxygens, which also gives me 28 uh, oxygens. Right, so the equation is balanced. <coughs> right, now if we look at the next one, it says consider the following unbalanced equation. So we need to be able to balance that. In order to balance that, and we look at this and we say, okay, do we have, so we put a two in front here, and with calcium hydroxide, that gives us two moles of ammonia gas, plus calcium chloride, plus two moles of, water okay and that's also in a gaseous state so what does this tell us this tell us two moles of ammonium chloride plus one mole of calcium hydroxide uh, will react to give us two moles of ammonia gas plus one mole of calcium chloride plus two moles of water but when we have this, we need to work out the masses so we know here we have two right moles of it, and then we need to work out the mass of ammonium chloride, and ammonium chloride is 53 Ammonium chloride is 53.5 grams, right? It's not too clear. Let's just get it. 53.5 grams, okay? And uh, calcium hydroxide will be 70, 74 grams and what happens we get two moles of ammonia so we know ammonia is 17 grams right plus calcium chloride uh, look at that it's 111 grams plus 2 times water. We know it's 2, two for hydrogen and 16 for oxygen. So that's 18 grams. Which means in total here we have 107 grams. Right? And that's 74 grams which yields... 34 grams of this plus, okay, could just say plus uh, one, one, one grams plus 36 grams of water. Now, if you look at this together, we see that uh, <coughs> we have 181 grams. And if we add that, we see 181 grams. Right, so that means the mass is conserved as I um, alluded to it earlier. So this gives you an indication. I'm just showing you that the masses uh, are conserved uh, here. <coughs> right, now that we have that, but we want to know if 
80.25 grams of ammonium chloride reacts with excess with excess CaOH what mass of uh, CaCl2 will be produced right so what we want to know is we have only 80 we have only 80 point two two five grams of ammonia and we have excess of that calcium uh, hydroxide we have excess isn't it and we want to know how much of calcium chloride will we get Right, so when you have uh, this, you need to relate uh, the, uh, the ammonium chloride to, uh, to calcium chloride, which means if we now take, say, a mass relationship, right, if I take a mass relationship, then I have, uh, we say we have, <coughs> A hundred and seven grams of NH four Cl gives us uh, gives us a hundred and eleven grams of CaCl two. Right, as you can see there. Right, so a hundred and seven, a uh, hundred and seven. There yields 111 grams of calcium chloride, right? But we want to know 80.25 grams of NH4Cl. How much of calcium chloride would it yield? So we say, all right, let's assume it, it yields X. Right, it yields X grams. <coughs> Could say X grams. But now we want to determine what is X, right? So we can now look at this relationship and if we look at this, we say, okay, what we do is, <coughs> is we uh, know that we can cross multiply like this there right we can cross multiply like that and like that okay to solve for x now the thing is we say okay so it's uh, it's then uh, x times 107 grams, right, is equal to uh, 80.25, right, grams times 111 grams, and uh, therefore x Therefore, x is equal to 80.25 grams times 111, one gram all upon 107 grams, which would then give us, <coughs> which would then give us 83.25 grams of CaCl2. Right, but now see what I have done here. I have cross multiplied, but uh, uh, you have a relationship. So uh, uh, to translate the 
above mathematically mathematically okay to translate the above mathematically we can then say x times 107 grams is equal to uh, uh, 80.25 times 111 grams but knowing it and using the algorithm is fine but you need to know what we actually doing here because what we uh, how, how is it why do we cross multiply uh, in order to get the math uh, to get that equation because we know 107 grams right uh, is related to, so it's 107 grams of NH4Cl, right, upon 111 grams of CaCl2 is equal to 80.25 grams of nh 4 Cl upon x grams of C A C A C L two. So you yeah, see how I've translated that uh, uh, into a mathematical equation. Okay. And once we have uh, because the ratio of of these two in terms of that. The ratio of these two is equal to the ratio of those. And then it's an easy thing to work out what x is because you want x to be the subject of the formula. And you know if you want x to be the subject of the formula, then I can multiply here by x. Okay. And what I do this side I must do on this side, so I multiply by x. If I multiply both sides by x, z, x, z, x cancels out. Now I've got x, right, times 107 grams upon 111 grams, and that is equal to 80.25 grams. But if I want x to be the subject of the formula, then I need to multiply this by uh, <coughs> this side by 111 grams uh, upon 107 grams. So what I do this side, I must uh, then do on this side 111 one grams upon 107 grams. So that, 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 that cancels out, so I'm balanced with x. And what is x equal to? x is equal to 80.25 times 111 upon 107 grams. So whilst it's useful to use this algorithm here, you need to know what you are doing mathematically. Right, that is important. Otherwise, you're going to just say you, cr you, you cross multiplying, but no, behind that you have a proper uh, a mathematical uh, a sequence, right, that you are using. So we have that. But now I've shown you this in terms of, of the math relationship, right. But let's say, for instance, we want to have an indication of the uh, mole relationship here, okay? So, all right, so let's say we want to have a mole relationship. Now, let's see if we have a mole relationship. Right? So we know that in this case we had uh, N, we want to determine N, and we know we have 
point uh, what is it eighty point two five okay eighty point two five grams all upon the molar mass of uh, ammonia is fifty three point five grams per mole which then gives us one point five moles of NH four Cl right so but we want to know uh, if we look at this in terms of our stoichiometry two two moles of NH four Cl gives us <coughs> right two moles of ammonia. Am I right? Does it? Let's look at that. Two moles of this gives us two moles of ammonia. Okay. So All right, give us two mole of ammonia, but therefore one comma five mole of NH four Cl will uh, will react and give us one comma five mole of NH three. <coughs> Right? And if we, okay, but uh, I beg your pardon, we're not linking it to that. We linking it, we linking it to the mass of calcium chloride. Okay, to the mass of calcium chloride. So the relationship between this and that, it gives us one mole of calcium chloride. Okay. Okay. So, uh, we need to relate it to calcium chloride. So, gives us one one mole of CaCl2 so one comma five mole uh, will give us how much will give us X so we go through the same thing again and we say okay uh, we could do the same thing again and we say we cross multiply we cross multiply like that and so that we can solve for x okay so which means in this situation we have then x is equal to 1.5 moles right times 1 mole upon 2 moles all right, and which then gives us 0.75 moles of CaCl2. Right. So if we have that, and we want to know now, uh, since we got the moles of, C, uh, of CaCl2, what is its mass? The uh, mass, so since we have n is equal to mass upon molar mass of CaCl2 uh, and we know uh, and, and we want the mass so the mass is equal to n times m of CaCl2 and we got 0.75 moles times 
that was 111 grams per mole and that gives me 83.2 grams and as you can see that is equal to uh, 80 3.25 grams <coughs> right so you have that okay <coughs> now <coughs> we want to know uh, it says the Uh, your what volume what volume of ammonia gas will form at STP from 80.25 grams of ammonium chloride okay so we got B uh, right uh, so N of NH4Cl would be 80.25 grams all upon 53.5 grams per mole <coughs> which is equal to 1,5 moles right of NH uh, of NH4Cl but we know that that uh, if uh, from the stoichiometry that from okay uh, stoichiometry From stoichiometry, that means from that equation, we know that two moles of NH4Cl, right? Uh, when it reacts, it gives us two moles of NH3. But we don't have two moles, we have 1.5 moles, so 1.5 moles of NH4Cl will give us 1.5 mole of NH3. <coughs> but what we want the volume, right? So we know N is equal to V upon V molar, right? which implies that and that's on your on your data sheet okay so v is equal to n times v molar of nh3 which gives us 1.5 moles times now a mole of any gas at stp occupies 22,4 decimeter cube so decimeter cube per mole that cancels out uh, mole cancels out so what do we have we have then that is equal to 33.6 decimeter cubed is the volume of ammonia gas okay so there you have that <coughs> And make sure that you uh, know what formulas appear on the data sheet because it's important. Right. And also make sure what uh, physical constants are given to you. Okay. Okay. Now it says calculate uh, the mass. Okay. Calculate the mass. Uh, of oxygen obtained when 14.7 grams of potassium 
chloride, potassium chloride, it's not potassium chloride, let's just correct this again. Mm. Okay. Potassium chlorate. Right, when potassium chlorate decomposes completely to form potassium chloride. <coughs> so, uh, we have here it says calculate okay calculate right calculate ah uh, Calculate the mass of oxygen obtained when 14.7 grams of potassium chloride decomposes completely to form potassium chloride. So, okay, we say all right. We know here we've got two moles of potassium chloride. Uh, when it decomposes, we get two moles of potassium chloride and three moles of O2. But now let's look at this. So we got two of potassium uh, chlorate and potassium chlorate. The mass is 122.5 grams, right? And that the two and potassium chloride is 74.5 grams and that gives us 3 and oxygen is 32 so that's 32 grams <coughs> which is then equal to 245 grams that gives us 149 grams and that gives us 96 grams. If we look at this and that, right, that is 245 grams. Okay, now we want to know, calculate the mass of oxygen obtained. So we say, all right. <coughs> and we can ha uh, ha uh, have a look at it in terms of uh, the mass relationship. And we say, okay, uh, we got, so we got 245 grams of grams of KClO3. And what does it give us? It gives us 96 grams of O2. Right, 245 gives us 96. But we don't have 245, we got 14.7 grams of KClO3. And we want to know how much of oxygen we're going to get, and that would be X grams. And we do the same thing again. We say, all right, let's maybe take a different color this time. Say so that we cross multiply like that. And like that, now remember, we cross multiply because we know uh, even if we set up that equation uh, mathematically, what this would mean is that <coughs> uh, x, right, is equal to 14.7 grams times 96 grams all upon... 245 grams, which is then equal to 5.76 grams of O2. Right. <coughs> so, uh, 
So that's a mass relationship. We could obviously use a mole relationship and come to the same answer. <coughs> right. Now let's look at the next one. It says, what mass of potassium chlorate must be heated in order to get 90 decimeter cubed of oxygen at STP? Now you know what STP is? STP, we did it in our previous videos, is standard temperature and pressure, right? And standard temperature is a north degree Celsius of 273 Kelvin and pressure, uh, standard pressure is 101.3 kilopascals or 1.01 times 10 to the 5 pascals, okay? So, uh, we have, we have now, if you look at this, we say N of O2, right, is equal to V upon Pm, which implies, right, uh, heated and we have 90 decimeter cube for that, we want to know that if it's 90 decimeter cube and the molar volume is 22.4 decimeter cube per mole, which is then equal to 4 moles. Right, decimeter cancels out and mole per mole goes on top as mole, so it is uh, 90 decimeter cubed is equal to 4 mole. Right, so uh, we have that, so now using, using a mole relationship, using a mole relationship, okay, we say, right, two, two moles, of KClO3 gives us 3 moles of O2 gas. Right, but we know what do we have? We have 4 moles of O2. So this is asking if Four moles are, are, are generated of O2 gas is generated. How much of potassium chlorate was used? So it's the same thing. We just uh, put the X. Um, so the unknown is our X here. <coughs> Which would mean again, uh, if we now cross multiply and we say, okay, that way, and we say that way, then what do we have? Uh, <coughs> X, right? X is equal to uh, 2, X is equal to 2 mole, right? times 4 moles all, all upon 3 moles, okay, which means uh, that is equal to 2.68 moles, right, of KClO3 that has to be heated in order to give us to uh, to give us uh, in order to give us 90 decimeter cubed of oxygen right but now 
we want to know what is the mass. So n is equal to m upon m k c l o three, <coughs> which implies that m is equal to n times uh, uh, times the molar mass of k c l o three which is then equal to 2.68 moles times 122.5 grams per mole and which says that it is 328.13 grams of KCL uh, of potassium chloride that needs to be heated in order to give us that required volume. But you can also uh, do this in terms of uh, uh, using mass ratios, but here I have shown you how to do this in terms of using mole ratios. <coughs> right, now let's look at the next one. Here we have consider the following Balanced chemical equation, right? And this equation is balanced. Okay. <coughs> so, uh, it says here, okay, so let's just take a look at this. Okay. Let's do this. It can just give us some space. Right, so if we look at this, uh, it says one mole of calcium carbonate plus two moles of of nitric acid. Right, uh, gives us calcium nitrate plus carbon dioxide plus uh, H2O. Okay. So, if we look at this here, we have <coughs> calcium carbonate, which is 100 grams, right? And that reacts with nitric acid, which is 2 times 63, okay? And... <coughs> It says calculate the mass of calcium carbonate that will remain unreacted if 50 grams of calcium carbonate is put into a solution containing 18.9 grams of nitric uh, acid. Right. So, uh, here we say, okay, we've got 100 grams of calcium carbonate and uh, two moles of nitric acid, okay? And we are not really interested what happens there because we want the relationship between uh, calcium carbonate and nitric acid, okay? So in this case, we say, okay, 100 grams of CA. CO3 uh, reacts with uh, nitric acid, so it reacts with 126 grams of nitric acid, so we can say 126 grams of HNO3. Right, but we want, we want to calculate the mass of CO3 that will remain unreacted if 50 grams of CaCO3 uh, is put into a solution containing 18.9 uh, containing grams of, of, of nitric acid. So uh, if we say, say X grams, of CaCO3 will uh, give us 
18.9 grams of nitric acid. Right, so if we now solve for x, x is equal to 100 uh, grams, right, times 18.9 grams all upon uh, 126 grams and 126 grams and that will then give us 15 grams of CaCO3 uh, CO3 reacted okay that would mean that is the amount that reacted okay so we want to know how many unre how much unreacted so unreacted <coughs> unreacted would be uh, equal to 50 grams minus 15 grams therefore 35 grams of CaCO3 is unreacted. Right, now let's look at this question. The reaction between sodium and water is represented by the following balanced equation. So it means two moles of water, I mean two moles of sodium metal reacts with two moles of water uh, to give us two moles of sodium hydroxide plus one mole of hydrogen gas. Right, let's uh, just have its relationship there. So we know we got 2 times 23 grams uh, and here that's 2 times 18 and that gives us sodium hydroxide is 40 23 plus 16 plus 1 is 40 grams okay let's also say grams there and that gives us 2 grams of H2 right if we look at this which means it is 46 plus 36 which gives us now uh, 80 plus 2 so here we have 82 and there we have 82 grams I'm just uh, balancing it for you now we say during the reaction 10 grams of sodium reacts with excess 2 decimeter cube of water so this is in excess right but we have 2 decimeter cube of water okay so the sodium uh, then reacts with water and uh, then we have sodium hydroxide in it and plus H2 uh, gas that's given off. Now it says write down the values of temperature and pressure at STP. So that's from your data sheet. Temperature is equal to 273 Kelvin and pressure is equal to 1.013 3 times 10 to the 5 pascals or it's also equal to 101.3 kilopascals. Right, then it says calculate the mass in grams of uh, mass in grams of hydrogen gas produced. Right? <coughs> so we want to know the mass in grams of hydrogen gas produced uh, when we have 10 grams of 
uh, of sodium reacts, right? <coughs> so we say okay. Uh, let's say we got forty. We know we got forty six grams of Na. Right, forty six grams of Na here. Okay. When it reacts, uh, we then get two grams of H two. Isn't it so? Right, in terms of our. Uh, if you look at the stoichiometry, we got two grams of H H two, right? Uh, right. But as you can see there, that it is two grams of H two. Right, but we don't want to know, we want to know 10 grams of, of Na, how much of hydrogen gas would it uh, generate? So we say X is equal to 10 grams times 2 grams all upon 46 grams which then gives us 0 0.43 grams Point four, uh, 0 0.43 grams of H2 <coughs> okay so we know 10 grams how many grams of H2 it produced but we want to know what is the volume in decimeter cubed uh, of hydrogen gas produced at STP. So we say, okay, uh, let's take this a little bit up. All right, so if you want to know, <coughs> so that's number one, volume in decimeter cubed of hydrogen uh, gas, so we got 0 0.43 grams, so let's work out its moles. So we got, we got N of H2 is equal to 0.43 grams all upon 2 grams per mole which then gives us zero point two one moles of H two right but we want to know what volume it produces so we have N is equal to V upon V M and which then implies that V is equal to point two one right two one it's actually two one five moles right point two point two one five moles right times uh twenty two point four deci meter cubed per mole right and that gives us four point eight four point eight two decimeter cubed <clears throat> right now 
we want to know uh, the mass uh, in grams of any uh, any OH produced, right? So we say okay, forty six grams of Na, right? Produces. I'll just do that. Uh, eighty grams of Na. OH. But we want to know how much 10 grams of Na, how much of this will it produce? And that's X. So we say X is equal to 10 grams times 80 grams all upon 46 grams and that tells us 17.3 9 grams of NaOH is produced when we use 10 grams of sodium. <coughs> okay, so now we say, okay, what is the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution? So we know C, again this information will be on the data sheet, so N is useful to know these formulas. Uh, although they are on a data sheet, right? Uh, so that is equal to uh, zero point four three moles, right? And what's the volume? Remember, we said that it is in a two decimeter cube uh, of water, and two decimeter cube is actually two liters, right? So that would be then two decimeter cube of water, or right? So and I'm saying equivalent, that would be uh, <coughs> point two two mole per decimeter cube. That is the concentration, right? We did that in the uh, previous video, so you should know how to work out concentrations. Right, now let's look at the next one. <clears throat> Imagine you are working on ways to improve the process by which iron ore, right, containing Fe2O3 is converted to iron. In your test, you carry out the following reaction on a small scale, okay? <clears throat> so let's say... Get a bit more space there. Right, so we say okay. <coughs> we have uh, iron oxide plus uh, one mole of iron oxide plus three moles of uh, carbon monoxide gives us two moles of iron plus three moles of carbon dioxide, right? And uh, this is balanced. Okay, the, the equation is balanced. So we say, okay, uh, <clears throat> we have now 2 times 56. Yes, so plus uh, 3 times 16, right? plus uh, four, uh, we have plus, okay, let's look that, let's leave that there. All right, I'm just doing this here. So we say, we say plus, <coughs> 
3 times 12 plus 16 this time I, I've just uh, broken it up I'm showing you how I got it and 56 plus 3 times 12 plus uh, oxygen is 32 which means I got here uh, <coughs> in total we have uh, 1, 1, 2 grams and that gives us uh, 48 right which then gives us 1, 1, 2 grams and that gives us plus 132 grams and if we look at this together as grams that is actually 244 uh, grams which uh, sorry I've made a mistake here that gives us 84 grams which then gives us <coughs> uh, so this in total would be 3 times 16 oh I've made another error let's just get this right uh, right so it's 2 times 56 plus 3 times 16 which is actually 1 let's just sort this out 1 1 uh, 2 plus 48 so, so that together gives us 160 right 160 grams and plus 84 which then gives us 244 grams right and which in this case also gives us 244 grams okay there we have that but now we want to know the theoretical yield right if we say if for instance <coughs> if for instance if we start with 150, 150 grams of iron oxide and excess we got an excess of CO uh, gram uh, carbon dioxide what is the theoretical yield of Fe so we know okay if we have 160 grams of Fe2O3 right here like I showed you here let me just I'll get another color there it's 160 grams of that right And that gives us one, one, two grams of Fe. There. Right. But we've only got 150 grams of Fe2O3. So what is it supposed to give us theoretically uh, X grams of Fe? So X is equal to 150 grams times 112 grams all upon <coughs> 160 grams and what does it give us it gives us 105 grams right so the theoretical amount that 150 grams right of this uh, gave us 105 grams now it's supposed to give us 105 grams of Fe, so this is the theoretical amount. Okay, so that's the theoretical amount. Right, so that's what we're supposed to get in terms of this. But now what, what we see here is that how much did we get? We actually, by experiment, only got 
89.7 grams. So we say, okay, now we need to get the percentage yield, right? Uh, because it says, determine, get the percentage yield. So we say, okay, percentage yield is equal to actual, what we got from experiment, over the theoretical, what we supposed to get in terms of our uh, equation, times 100%. So we got, uh, we got 87.9 grams, and we were supposed to get 105 grams times the percentage here, which means our percentage yield is 83.7%. Right, it means uh, somewhere along the line we have lost uh, at least about 16% of uh, of uh, in terms of the yield, right? So for every 100 grams, there's uh, 16 grams less. So our percent yield is only 83.7%, right? And uh, chemists always want to improve the yield. You know, they want to get 80, 85, 90, 95%. Okay, uh, so there you have it, and see you next time.